Ivo Kruger was hailed as Europe's saviour throughout the 1920s, and he was regarded as the country's best con artist a month after his passing in 1932. Crazy transformation, isn't it? John Kenneth Galbraith referred to Eva Kruger as the Leonardo of the trade of boiler room operators, brokers of stocks in made-up Canadian mines, and mutual fund managers with an unrestrained sense of brilliance and imagination. But he later became a well-known fraudster. Want to know about him? Then stay tuned till the end. In Kalmar, Sweden, Eva Kruger was born in the year 1880. His father and uncle already owned two small match factories, therefore the family was already involved in the industry. In 1908, he founded the construction firm Kruger & Hole, but Eva Kruger earned the nickname Match King because he returned to sell matches and had the global match monopoly for a very long time. Eva Kruger took over his father's match company and merged it with other small independent match companies using money acquired via Kruger & Hole. Following that, the firm merged with its biggest rival in the middle of the First World War's supply disruptions brought on by blockades and a lack of ships. As more gas stoves were being adopted and more cigarettes were being smoked, there was an increase in the demand for matches worldwide. Kruger worked along with significant international match companies to segment markets and regulate prices. Less businesses would now profit from the advantage of circumstances, especially after smaller companies, sometimes located in war-toned nations, had been brought out. When market circumstances were good, Kruger secured funds in Sweden and Britain to develop and solidify his company's position in the worldwide market. Probably you're thinking that he's a good businessman. So what went wrong? Eva Kruger shot himself in the heart on March 12th, according to the media, to evade creditors after the NYSE crash. Shocking, right? It's absolutely mind-boggling how he became so wealthy. Even Kruger had no idea how much he earned. He expanded into a variety of industries and even controlled L.M. Ericsson, a renowned communications business. He established an enormous pyramid and holdings business to make his money where there were no strict accounting regulations. Eva expanded until he was bigger than the state and then began to determine the fates of other European states with his generous personal loans, seriously damaging political systems and governments. The skill of Kruger to raise money goes a long way toward explaining how he went from being the match industry's czar to a worldwide banker. Eva Kruger began lending money to governments in the middle of the 1920s in return for a permitted monopoly on the manufacture of matches. The Kruger loan would be secured and its instalments would be made by taxes levied on matches or royalties collected from match sales. A Kruger loan would appear to avoid the typical dispute between a lender and a debtor since both parties would profit from maintaining the monopoly. In exchange for a partial monopoly, Kruger agreed to grant the French government a $75 million loan in 1927 at a rate that was lower than what the markets would have offered. The business had established similar agreements with nine European nations and three South American ones by 1930. Even still, Kruger's businesses borrowed heavily, totaling almost $500 million between 1925 and 1931. Even huge countries' public borrowings couldn't compare to this sum. Investors were promised extremely large dividends on Kruger's shares. A 30% dividend was being given by Kruger & Toll on its paid-in share capital. Comparatively, sovereign lending served as a way to join the local match market. It had no likelihood of paying investors dividends, they had to be covered by raising further funds. In any event, considering that the International March Corporation's stock price increased by 1000% between 1923 and 1930, this wasn't exactly challenging. The 1929 stock market crash put a stop to the boom and the ensuing recession lasted longer than most people, including Kruger himself, had anticipated. Gaps in the company's financial statements were being found and short sellers were betting against the stock. To raise the money he promised specific nations, Kruger needed to seem to be in a strong financial position. However, the markets were in a state of disarray and the value of all assets was declining. The businesses resorted to fraud. On their records, their assets were overpriced. Nevertheless, creditors requested fresh collateral out of a legitimate worry over the decline in the value of securities held. Kruger faked $142 million in Italian government bonds to satisfy their demands. After a few months, the purchaser of International Telephone and Telegraph discovered that Kruger had made false representations about the company's liquidity condition. They asked that he repurchase the shares, but Kruger was out of cash. Greater scrutiny of his businesses and a lack of funds to meet his immediate needs led to Kruger's suicide in a Paris flat in March 1932. What a destiny, right? Tell us your views about the Match King in the comments below. Thank you for watching.